views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Fired up for Spirit Fire Radio, your guide to practical mindfulness and meditation. Join hosts Tim Darter and Steve Kramer and discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. Watch yourself connecting in a whole new way and find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Now here's your hosts, Tim Darter and Steve Kramer. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. And welcome to Spirit Fire Radio. We just got done with the Columbus Day weekend, and the colors up this way in New England are absolutely stunning, which is a great segue into this week's show, because we always start step five Mm -hmm. with um, a phrase about autumn and how the leaves rejoice and release, and the step this week is soften, open, and release. Yes. Last week, we had soften, open, and receive, and we talked with a singer-songwriter Lars Young about inspiration and ways to receive by observing, by observing the human, the human condition, by observing human experience, and creating songs by bringing that into the creative process, by using inspiration, by observation, by allowing, softening, opening, and receiving inspiration. So we thought this week that we would stick to the music theme, and we have an effervescent singer, songwriter, voice coach, and energy healing practitioner, Kiara Duran, with us. And we're going to be talking about softening, opening, and releasing. And as I look out the window, it is just amazing. Autumn is so beautiful. And the leaves are such a a, a great sort of analogy for softening and opening and releasing. The trees are stunning. When we think of a, when we look outside and see the leaves releasing from the tree, it's just this dazzling expression of color. And you think of the leaves all year long. They sort of create, um, they collect energies for the tree to do what it's going to do to, uh, to flower and bear fruit, give the tree all the energy that it needs throughout the summer. And then in the autumn, it just comes alive with color. And its last expression before it falls off is just beautiful. And it releases. And the tree doesn't really mind this. You don't see the tree collapse. It pauses and goes into its winter hibernation. And there's this joy in release. So Kiara Duran is just an amazing sound coach who teaches people to release their voice, find their true voice, and learn how to let that go, let that sing, let that dazzle. And I know Kiara. uh, She was a student of mine in New York City. I teach a form of energy healing called esoteric healing. And Kiara Duran was one of my students who actually became one of my teachers in that she applies the ideas behind subtle energy healing, which is using subtle forms of energy. It's a hands-off energy uh, healing practice. And Kiara has found a very practical way to apply vibration to the voice in ways that she uh, helps people release blockages and find flow within their not only their subtle systems but actually with the tangibility of their voice itself she saw so many parallels between vibration sound the chakra system and the ways we use our voice to to sort of even balance our energy and to find release that i just thought it would be fascinating to have her on have her talk to us a little bit about that process So, Kiara, welcome. It's so great to have you here with us. Thank you so much, Steve and Tim. I'm so excited to be here. What a joy. Wonderful. So, Kiara, the voice is just so important. I know Tim and I were listening to these the Democratic debates, and we were listening to the quality of people's voices. Mm -hmm. You know, you saw Hillary being so absolutely clear, very focused, very, very decisive, and you saw... Bernie being really full of energy and his voice just had this fire and this sort of drive, this drive for change behind it. So there's such a vibration. It's so telling the voice and the quality of the voice. So just tell us in your words, the importance of the voice, what it says, what it shows us. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. 
Well, in my own experience with my own voice, both my creative voice and my singing voice, um, I've, I've discovered so, so much <laughs> just in the process of developing and uncovering my own um, contractions and blockages along that, in that path. Um, the students that come to me too, it's very clear just in the sound of their voice and what's happening with them when they arrive to me that I discover um, what they're needing very, very quickly. Um, they can be speaking just in speaking to me. And once their voice starts to sound, when we start to sing, I can get a sense of what um, is going on for them, where they are tight and what they need. Um, and when we walk around the world using our voice all the time, we don't realize how much it represents about the things that we feel about ourselves, how we think about ourselves, what we think we're capable of doing or not doing. So the work that um, I do with people on their singing voice immediately translates. It's the same conversation. It's the same work that happens on a um, holistic level with the entire system, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and on their physical body. Which is just fascinating. And I hear so much it's about how we're received. So once Absolutely. again, it's that give and take of you sensing right away when you receive a client and you receive the in your own ears, in your own systems, what's the quality of their voice? Are they sort of um, expressing the fullness or are they not expressing the fullness? So I love it again. It's this exchange of, of receive and release. Are they a match? Yes. And oftentimes it's a visibility issue. A lot of people have received messages about themselves or their voice and they're, they're afraid to be seen in their radiant, full, messy selves. And that's our work when they arrive is finding the places where those, um, that their channel is blocked and being able to uncover those. Transformation. We, we say that word so much and it's so interesting that we're on transformation talk radio. And I hear that transformation is such is what's happening, you know, in your office or with your clients and that we're on talk radio. So once again, here we are using our voices. It's all so important uh, in our identity. So I would love to hear your voice, and I want to have other people experience just the beautiful lushness of your voice. We're going to go to a break in a minute, and when we come back, we're going to hear one of Kiara's songs. We're going to hear a clip from Caterpillar Eyes when we come back. So we're going to go to break, and then more with Kiara Duran. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lime Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Shine on. 
on radio. Find Your Shine with Kelly is the show that celebrates what makes you, you. Join co-hosts Kelly Wadler and Dr. Pat Basile as they break down how to brilliantly fuel and move your body and love what makes you shine. Kelly is a professional arts and wellness coach dedicated to helping brilliant women find their confidence, energy, self-love, and shine. Tune in to Shine On Radio with Kelly and find your shine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Kiara Duran singing Caterpillar Eyes. What a beautiful, lush voice. Welcome Thank back. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Kiara. And we might as well tell people now that your album, Kiara, is available on iTunes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and, you can get and, it on iTunes. Indeed. And you want to tell them any more? Any other ways they can get in touch with you? Uh, well, let's see. You can listen to the whole song Caterpillar Eyes if you want to check it out on iTunes, like we said. It's also available on Spotify. You can listen to my whole album on Spotify. And, um, and those song, are the main ways, yeah. And that song is so great because, you know, it's about finding your voice. So, so I would love to hear how you found your voice. How did you get into um, the vocal side of things? And how did you correlate all of that with the energy work you do? Gosh, that's such a great question. And it's been the heart of my work, I would say, for my whole life. But since I've discovered this energy work and really been a student of it and getting really deep into it um, over the last five years, I've found such resonance between the two. And really all along, I was doing vibrational energy work healing with my singing. I just didn't know it because uh, the energy work is vibration. And um, when when I work on people's chakras or my own chakras, can't necess- you don't necessarily um, hear it or see it with the naked eye, but um, the vibration is present. But the cool part about when we sing is that we can actually hear with a voice the vibrations changing and mixing and spiraling up and moving in the flow when they actually start to to ring. And that can really be a fun way to get that experience that you have in an energy healing treatment through esoteric healing, but you you get it in a way that you can really interface with that anyone could when they learn how to sing. So that's been wonderful to, um, to explore with myself and with my students. Now for me, how, what my path has been is I've been singing since I was a little girl. I was born in Venezuela and everybody, all the children in Venezuela sing. So I've been singing since I was a small girl and, um, my parents are both really musical. And so they were always singing and playing with me. And when, um, I got into school in the United States, when we moved to the United States, I was about six or seven. Um, as I got to be in music classes and stuff, when I got to college, I'm sorry, when I got to high school, I did a lot of musicals and in junior high school. And I just kind of 
scooted by um, really doing these things on just my talent and being able to figure out sort of how to sing. But I, I didn't start taking lessons until seventh grade. And even then, I feel like I was just learning songs, um, but I didn't really understand how my mechanism worked until I got to college. So I applied to college. I got into the University of Miami in Coral Gables, Florida. So much fun. Got a scholarship. But when I arrived, it was the summer after my senior year of high school, my voice um, had been injured. And so what I, what had happened was I was a lifeguard over the summer and I was yelling in like 110 degree heat in Phoenix, Arizona without drinking enough water, which will do a lot of damage to a voice. And then, um, I was a cheerleader my senior year of high school. So those two things along with also, um, my parents were going through a divorce, all of the combination of those things, you can see how not only the physical aspects affect a voice, but the emotional, mental aspects can also really impact a voice. My entire vocal mechanism shut down, and I really couldn't sing. Um, I had laryngitis, prolonged laryngitis, and um, I had something called uh, prenodular swelling, which are basically um, calluses that had developed on my vocal cords, but very, very little calluses. And so young for all that. I know. And I just got into school. To, go to school to sing, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I just got into school and I was all excited about, you know, singing songs and meeting people. And here I was having so much trouble creating sounds, just getting my voice to work for me. So I had already been placed in a voice studio that was pretty highly sought after. This teacher um, was one of the bigger opera teachers at our school. And once I got in her studio, it became very clear to me, she wanted me to sing in a certain way that I was unable to do because my voice was hurt. Um, and she wasn't the, the type of teacher that could meet me where I was and help me grow and help me heal. And so what ended up happening in that studio was I, I got a lot of, um, We'll talk more about this, I know, uh, but I'll start to introduce it now. This idea of, of thoughts and emotions are actually forms. They're matter. So I didn't know that at the time when I was like 18 years old, but I know that now with all the studying I've done and, and the energy work in particular, that thoughts are just as real as like your dining room table or um, the door that you open to get into your house or your apartment. It's, it's just as real as that. And they have an impact on a system. that's just as real. And in the, in that, those lessons with that teacher, I was already feeling afraid that my voice wasn't working, but she would tell me all kinds of things like nobody will ever listen to this. You won't, you know, no one will ever come and listen to you sing. Like it was pretty abusive environment. And I only stayed in there for a semester. And then I got to, um, I got the good fortune, really the biggest blessing of being placed in a voice studio with my teacher, Mary Scheibe, who taught me everything I know about my voice to really, really play it like an instrument and learn how to support my voice and to release it and really to do energy work <laughs> through my voice, um, to be able to keep the flow of it and to really get acquainted with the vibration of my sound and, and trust that. Well, I just want to go back to something you said because I think we can all relate to it. Every listener, myself, Tim, everybody, that you get these ideas in your mind that are often put there by somebody else that says, you can't do this. You will never do this. To say to a singer in their freshman year, no one will listen to you. You're not going to be able to sing. You know, you could have made a choice and, and that could have been this, you know, you say thoughts are a form like a door. Well, that door could have closed and just stood in your way. Uh, in, in meditation, they, they talk about the unruly mind as an elephant. And, you know, we think of elephants as being this huge, massive form that just can sit and fill a room. That's what the mind's capable of doing and what thoughts are capable of doing. And I just think it's worth, you know, sort of underscoring that part of the conversation that you didn't let that get in the way. You know, you found a way to say, well, is this real? Something deep inside of you said, well, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to move around these forms and, and, and voila, there comes a teacher that actually can meet you at a, at a level where you knew intrinsically and innately inside you were meant to be met. Yeah. Absolutely. And she's such, um, a teacher, like on a soul level, my teacher, 
Um, her, her name is Mary Scheibe. She is such a, a healer and a teacher, and she taught me how to teach, but also how to heal um, myself. And I, I definitely didn't know that it was okay to make mistakes with my voice. I spent a lot of time protecting <laughs> myself uh, and hiding parts of my voice that I thought weren't working as well as other parts. And so um, there, my voice was fragmented when I got to her. And really what, what ended up happening was she helped me connect and smooth out to really bring together my voice as one one whole unit that sounded the same all throughout. I didn't have three or four different sounding voices depending on my ability. I, I, my whole voice sounded like me. And, um, absolutely. She really understood that too. In our very first lesson, her conversation with me was tell me what happened. How are you feeling? Like she's a very, she approaches you on a, an entire human level yeah, with all of your parts. Feeling. And you've been through this whole process, which I'm certain just makes you quite the healer. You know, it's only when we've really gone through that process ourselves that we can offer that wisdom to somebody else. And absolutely. And isn't mm -hmm. that life? I mean, that is life to uh, <laughs> take it all in, experience the good with the bad and learn the lessons from the bad and, and keep on trucking. Absolutely. You know, and what it, what it makes me think of is um, at the time, I was surrounded by other freshman singers and other, you know, older classmates in college that were singing these very fancy songs. And I wanted to sing those songs too. And I remember feeling like this was such a drag that my voice wasn't working and that it was a big bummer. But now I see what a gift it was that this is my path. That yeah. The only way I learned how to teach and do this work that I do now is because I had that experience. I look really forward to talking about the relationship to energy healing. Of course, it's something I know a little bit about myself, so it's mm -hmm. going to be so juicy. I think we're going to go to another break, and when we come back, I'd really love to dive into the chakras, seven chakras, seven octaves. You know, there's so many correlations. It just blows my mind, and it inspires me so much to hear you speak about it and for us to have conversation about it. So we're going to go to a break, and when we come back, more with Kiara Duran and the magic of the voice. Penny Lane, there is a barber showing photographs. And every head is at the pleasure to know. And all the people that come and go, stop and say hello. On the corner is a bank of the motor car. The little children have an him. so ambitious for a juvenile but then if you're so smart tell me why are you still so afraid hello and welcome back to spirit fire radio where we're talking to with kiara duran this week and her voice yes indeed the voice it's so important we are going to talk a bit about humanity and our energy systems i find it so fascinating the fact that there are seven colors to the rainbow, there are seven chakras, there are seven octaves, that number seven is so interesting and it seems so fundamental in expression and so fundamental in quality and voice and sound are just so important. We, you know, and God said, <laughs> we think of even the creation of all the world was upon a voice and upon a sound. The word om is so important and is said to also, in so many traditions, it's the sound that actually brought forth the creation of all that is. And humanity itself is so, We in, in certain lineages of wisdom, humanity represents the throat center, the throat chakra, which is mental creativity. And I find it interesting that as we talk about Soften, open, and receive. Soften, open, and release. We're talking about breath and we're talking about the lungs. And in the chakra system, the lungs are ruled by both the throat center and the heart center. So the throat center in terms of bringing the oxygen in and the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. And the throat center is related to the lungs as the oxygen goes into the bloodstream and is circulated. 
So that is the master teacher. The lungs are these master teachers conceptually and vibrationally for all of humanity. The heart center is so important for us to realize that what I do to you, I do to me. This idea of circulation, of of connectedness, interconnectedness, of union, all of those words have to do with the heart center. And the throat center has to do with creativity, of being of service, of what do we release out into the world. So the breath as respiration, we see the lungs as repetition, circulation, all of these words all sort of have so much to do with humanity evolving and moving forward. I just find all that so fascinating and that this area where our voice is created is in the throat itself. So Kiara, you you relate the chakra system to the voice. So I personally have been on the other side of one of your sort of little miniature of sort of um, uh, sessions where she's tapped on areas of my body and, and, and shown me where I'm holding my blockages. Esoteric healing has so much to do with finding ways to create flow within the energy system, um, creating balance and releasing blockages so that we can really find um, a sort of flow that is representative of our true self, of our innermost self. And so you can find in somebody's bodies by sort of holding their body, by feeling the vibration, by feeling where in their system they're trapped. And tell us a little bit about that. I mean, I know I've been on the receiving end where you've, you've tapped on my cheekbones and said, here, you're at, you know, this is the vibration of, of certain centers in your body. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yes. This is at the heart of how I approach uh, teaching. Um, And really, the way that I begin is to talk with my students and with myself about singing by feel and not by listening. So many of us sing, as we're singing, we're checking ourselves out. We're looking to see, was that good? Was that bad? Did I crack? Will I crack soon? Like This is the distraction that takes place while we are singing oftentimes, most more likely than not. Um, and what I do is bring my students into this experience of feeling their voice. So singing by feeling the vibration. So putting their hands on their body and feeling what their voice feels like when the vibrations are released and, and flowing. Um, and then it takes the attention away from this critical, controlled, perfectionistic mindset that really is um, a waste of energy, actually, because when we're listening to how we're singing, the note that we just sang already happened. We can't adjust it. It's already done, but it all, all it does is create more stress and worry and tension for us and gets in our way even more. So if and we can – oh, sorry. Go ahead. You, but, but once again, you keep hitting on these just amazing key points, which is those those – sentences that we hear in our head that you say somebody comes in and they've got these these thought forms that are getting mm-hmm. in the way and by feeling they're actually in the present moment there and you say you know as that note you just sang is in the past and it's never going to be here again once again it it's so relative to just simply being present and to um really embracing what's happening in the now so yes i had to say that Go on. i i agree and that's exactly what it is it's taking yourself in hand, you know, being with yourself in a way that's really intimate, actually, that um, has to do with walking through the thing that feels tight, the thing that is sticky, the contraction, and looking straight at it instead of trying to walk around it or ignore it or distract from it or just hide it. Um, So the interesting thing that happens when we sing by feel is that all of those thought forms, emotional forms, contractions come forward to be seen. And it is very uncomfortable for a beginning singer, particularly because they've spent a lot of time trying to ignore that (laughs) and not see that part of themselves. And um, the the great thing that I love about now the connection that that has to the chakras is is that, of course, um, energy follows thought. The way that what we think about the energy follows in that direction. So if you if you see with what I'm how I'm actually asking my students to bring their thought to themselves instead of having worrying about what other people think or what they're sounding like or how they're being perceived, instead bringing it and really centering in their heart, centering in their grounding and coming from that place. 
um, letting their voice ring really through both not only their throat chakra but their heart chakra both resonate you know one of the resonating chambers the speaker systems of our voice which is what you were talking about and tapping on your face what I was doing when I was tapping your face there's one speaker system that's right where our heart is where you would put your hand to say the pledge of allegiance it's right there the other one is is coming right underneath your eyes where the apple of our cheeks are and then above that is right above our eyebrows underneath you know you can put your fingers right under your eyebrows actually there's some uh, nerves there and you can really feel the vibration happening there and then the very top of our head is um where we would sing to do those high mariah carey whistle tones so all of this structure of our voice really is set up to release the vibrations as they get finer they they need more space to vibrate and we don't if we don't understand that structure as singers, we can really spend all of our time pushing on our voice, trying to shove it through our literal physical throat, our neck. And that's just too tight of a, of a, of a tube to send sound through. And it, it, there's no way that there's a, basically there's a limit to what you can do with a, a voice that has a lot of pressure on it. And that has a lot of control on it. There's, there's a cap off that happens. You can't sing higher than a certain note. And the, the quality, like you were speaking about with the people in, speaking in the debates, the quality of your voice will stay one way and there won't be any texture and availability to even sing with emotion because how we just, we were understanding that emotions flow, feelings flow. And really when you make a decision to control and put pressure on a voice, you're really making a decision to sing without emotion. And that that just creates more and more problems and blockages. So it's a real, it's a real connection to the well-being of our chakra system, to the flow of our, of our voice. It's, they're both very, very connected and really what we can make and create and its ability to come out into the world. It's all related to that sacral chakra and throat chakra connection and particularly with singing with the throat and the heart. And when we get those two plugged into each other, Really, the wonderful thing about it is when my students go into auditions, the people behind the panel can really feel along with them. They're not looking at my students as though they're thinking, oh, well, does this person have the high notes? Can they sing this really great, you know, these low notes and high notes? They're, it, the conversation goes out of their intellect and into their heart. And really, they feel along with them and they want to ask the question, where can we put this person in our show instead of are they doing what we need them to do technically? becomes a physical human experience and a connection you know Absolutely. there again we are with the heart and who who would think that you've got a resonating chamber within your heart i mean i know that was the most fascinating thing for me certainly i'm not a singer and i was moving the vibrations through different parts of my body which i do with clients all the time mm -hmm. but to actually have this tangible vibration that i could feel move from my heart center to my throat center to my ajna to my crown center and really understand that this is a higher, finer vibration. It resides within this area of our physiology, but that it also holds these higher vibrations, which I teach all the time, but I had never actually felt it and experienced it in a tangible way in that sense. I certainly sense energy that I would call it tangible, but it's all tangible. <laughs> yes. It's just that people that aren't, that aren't necessarily trained, their hand chakras aren't trained like, like ours are, they may not be able to actually feel it in that way, but they can feel it when they put their hands on their own body, like you just said. It's absolutely the coolest. It's like a bridge between the two. Indeed. And so I'd love to hear a little bit more about, about this uh, sort of idea of preparing people for an audition. I just think that's fascinating. You know, somebody comes to you and they, they want to, or they're going to a school, you know, they want to get into a performing arts school or they've got this, they've got this idea again, there it is. It's a thought form. They've got this idea of, I'm going to get into this school. I'm going to get this part. Now help me do that. Just a little more from you on that. I, because mm -hmm. I just find it fascinating, you know, what you've got to get through to get them, you know, to sort of, where are they and where are they going and how can they connect to these uh, people on the receiving end? Yes. So much of that has to do with bringing them back into themselves mm. and being present with themselves. A lot of the difficulty that arises with performing arts, you know, singing in particular, um, what I'll be speaking about right now is singing that, that is 
people get very focused on what other people think of them. Are they going to think I'm good enough? How do I compare to the person next to me? There's a lot of these things that get in the way and actually can block their voice. And oftentimes I've, I've had people come to me that have their voice so swallowed in the back of their throat because they were listening to some, you know, different voice type opera singer, or they were trying to mimic Beyonce or something that they were doing that is, is trying to be like somebody else or trying to be what they are not. And really oftentimes they have no experience of, of what they, what their vibration is, who they are and what they, what they feel like when they sing. So really that's my main thing is really stripping away anything that has, that isn't them helping them strip that away and get a real clarity for what their voice and their vibration feels like. And uh, I recently had an experience with a young woman at a university. I was coaching students for hairspray auditions and she came into me and was singing with, uh, her voice was pretty. It was very pretty. And, um, she, as she was singing the song through, I could see she was terrified, like the energy in her face and her body. She looked terrified, even though her voice sounded fine. It sounded pretty, but it didn't have a lot of richness of texture or emotional presence. So as we worked a little more and she started to actually sense her voice, she stepped away from being worried about what I was thinking about her or worried about how the audition would go and started getting really focused on the business of making the sound move through her. And then I started to get tingles and goosebumps up my arms because I could feel her heart. I could feel her spirit and her uniqueness moving through her and it's her own voice. And she looked at me and said, I've never experienced my voice in this way. I've just had like a life transforming experience of being able to feel my voice and being aware of that. And that's the thing is a lot of times students and, and, uh, and people who are artists are worried so much about what other people are thinking. They, they're, they're not remembering that what the people want to hear who come to see your shows or who are trying to cast you in a show is that spark of uniqueness is that soul in you. They want to hear that. And we spook ourselves out so much while we're preparing, um, being afraid, you know, those thought forms can implode on us that, that the heart of that can go away. So that's really my, my, my focus when I'm preparing a student for an audition is helping them really sparkle that really shine that up so that that is what's speaking at an audition and, and their technique is in place. Um, but their and because their technique is in place, their heart and their feelings are able to, to shine through. Mm. The process is just so important. I know I've, I've been with you even in class and I've heard you just make these sounds. You know, I've heard you sort of clearing your own centers by just creating these sounds and releasing these vibrations, which are sort of sometimes, whoa, girl, what was that? You know, uh-huh. <laughs> they're not pretty. That's and- a lot of the work. Sometimes the sounds are cranky and crackly. They sound, they pop and they snapple. And even that, you know, if a voice has had a lot of pressure on it, sometimes the only way it can release is to make a sound like, uh, and it isn't pretty. Um, and it's and, wonderful mm-hmm. that, that these, these students of yours and clients of yours can sit across from you where they know they're in a space with no judgment. They're in a space that they can just be themselves and go through that process. You know, I think everybody thinks, as soon as I can sing like Mariah Carey, I will be a singer. You know, but there you are across from them saying you're singing right now. It might sound ugly. It might sound horrible, but this is you finding your true voice. This is the process of you finding your true voice. And isn't that just the spiritual path? You know, people talk about meditation. You know, one day when I meditate, I'll be spiritual. When I learn, when I've got this meditation practice, then I will be spiritual. Well, you know what? The process of you finding your way through your thought forms, of you getting to your core, of you learning to sit peacefully, of you observing your breath, even though it might be choppy, it might be from you know your upper lungs and it might be contracted and it might be full of stress, that is the spiritual path. That is us coming into our own. That's our purpose for being here. No? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. And the contractions that you're talking about are the things that help me know where that student needs to work. The things that pop up where I can see their whole body tighten up or their voice gets small and tight and, and thin. Um, 
I, I can feel all of that. And that's, that's actually helping me understand where they are blocked. And, and, and it's, what was that? That's all heart. There you yes, go. Yes. It's yeah. helping me understand that. And, and, but to them, they've been hiding that for as long as they can remember. Right. And I'm asking them to reveal that and expose that. And what you were saying about sounding horrible or ugly, that is what they were thinking was going to be the end of the world. You know, oh, if I crack or my voice sounds bad, then then who am I? But actually, who could you be if you were not stuck in this box of what you think your voice is? What if your voice is broader, more expansive, more wide than you ever imagined? And that is the most exciting path. Like walking that path is super brave and it's, it takes vulnerability. But if they're willing to do it on the other side of it, they find a voice that is malleable, flexible, flowy, that has texture and qualities in it that are really human and that have the ability to change a life and connect to another person. You know, perfectionism, perfection is not relatable. It's, that's not, we don't, we're not, that's not what we are. We're human beings. And so when we can be messy and really dig into the heart of what it means to be human, as an, as an artist, I think that's really powerful. And exhilarating. I, I just kept wanting to say exhilarating. I just keep, keep hearing exhilaration. That path of discovery mm-hmm. is exhilaration. And, I mean, we've almost been talking for an hour. I can't even believe we haven't gotten nearly into <laughs> all that is Kiata Duran. Kiata co-founded, co-owns an amazing company called Three-Legged Chair. And she works with... Um, other be- these other beautiful teachers, <clears throat> and they teach kids, um, they, they work with kids to create original pieces of music and original theater productions that are just through the roof. I mean, these kids just go through the process with an immediacy and an honesty that only children are able to hold and embrace and actually teach us by their honesty. And um, I, I just... Kiara, would you come back next week? Could we could we have another another uh, another Spirit of Fire radio with you so we could really get into three legged chair? We haven't even begun. I'd love to. Of course, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> and we have a song. We actually have a song here that is. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. We're going to play. Um, Hold on to you in a sec. Just tell us a little bit about it, and let's let's listen to that. This song I wrote with. Um, contributions from an ensemble of a musical and they were all children from ages six to 13. And uh, the theme you'll hear it in the song, but uh, is really about what we've been talking about this whole time, your true voice, finding that true voice and letting it go and being, being that ringing that out into the world. And um, that, that is the gift that who you are at the heart of you is the gift. Wonderful. So this song was actually written by you with the kids. The kids wrote this song, yeah? Oh, yes. We worked on it together, and it's, you'll hear it. It's got, it's got their heart all over it. Wonderful. Let's give a listen. Hold on to you by Kiara Duran and the kids at the Mega Chair. You don't have to do everything right Or see things exactly the same way that I do You can try to do it anyway Even without perfect words to say You won't ever feel so proud If you go follow the crowd So let it go and be yourself I promise it will be alright change for someone else hold on to you with all your mind you're a gift to the world whether you're a narwhal a robot a bird or a girl hold on to you hold on to you no one is happy all the time There are lots of emotions deep down inside you. Sometimes we just need to know that it's okay to talk and let them show. You might want to keep them in and say nothing's happening. But let it go and be yourself. I promise it will be all right. Don't you 
change for someone else. Hold on to you with all your mind. You're a gift to the world. Whether you're a painted horse, an elf, a dragon, or a girl, hold on to you. Hold on to you. Say the things on the tip of your tongue. Don't leave the songs in your heart unsung. Use the air inside your lungs and let your imagination run. Make time for work and time for fun and time to really feel the sun. Change your attitude and get into the groove. Let it go and be yourself. I promise it will be all right. Don't you change for someone else. Yada, I'm teary. <laughs> I mean, it's just magic. It's just magic that you are just teaching these kids to embrace life in its fullness and in its ups and downs and telling, you know, these little kids singing hold on to you. It's just beautiful. I mean, I'm so happy you will come back and join us yes. next week. There's so much to talk about. I mean, three-legged chair is just an amazing endeavor. Um, so just uh, what a contribution, you know, what a contribution that you uh, give to the world with these beautiful uh, singers and children. And it's just amazing. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun, you guys. Appreciate it. Good. So Kiara Duran, you can look her up on Spotify and you can buy her amazing album. There are so many songs on there that I just love. The, the sea song, oh my gosh, it actually does make me cry every time I listen to it. So, Kiara Duran on iTunes and um, release. So, we could tell you right now if you want to release 2015, <laughs> come to Spiritfire for our New Year's retreat. We're going to do a New Year's retreat at Spiritfire. We do it every year. Bring in the new year in the beginning of January. And Donna Mitchell Moniak, who. Uh, who is responsible for the practice of living awareness. She will be leading meditations in the new year. If you want to find more out uh, more about that, go to www.spiritfire.com. Tim does that so well. No. <laughs> <laughs> and for more about the show and more about Kiara Duran, you can go to uh, www.spiritfireradio.com. And Kiara, it's just been a joy, as always, to talk to you. And again, we'll see you next week, which I can't wait. For part two. Yeah, see you then. Thanks a lot. All right, Kiara. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. Join Tim Darter and Steve Kramer and discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. Watch yourself connecting in a whole new way and find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. To learn more about Spirit Fire, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. 